Hi everyone, I'm Haley Davis with Destinations HD, if you don't know me. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. We have an exciting presentation planned about Holland and uh, the Dutch culture, so I'm excited to share that with you. Uh, every month I am trying to put these together so I can explore the different rivers um, that you have to offer, and when we can explore the seas again, that way you'll be able to choose which river cruise is best for you. So I have my partner in crime, uh, Marcy with Alma Waterways, and she's going to take it away for you and uh, explain all the, the experiences. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for setting everything up this evening. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you spending some of your evening hours with us um, to learn more about what AMA has to offer in some of our different destinations. This evening, we're going to cover the Netherlands or Belgium and the Netherlands. And um, I'm very excited about it because this is probably one of, I think, one of the neatest itineraries that we do. And so I'm gonna take myself off a of camera because I'm always moving my hands and shaking and I don't wanna be distracting when we go through this. So I'll take my camera off and then I'll come back on right at the end. If you have any questions, you can certainly type them in chat and, um, and we'll pick them up at the end and be able to share those with you. So let's get started. Okay, great. Thank you so much again. I don't know if you're familiar with AMA Waterways, but um, hopefully my ultimate goal is to share with you all the benefits that we have when you're traveling the beautiful rivers that we represent, which will be several exotic rivers, as well as all of the rivers in Western Europe. We are a family owned and operated company, which I think is so very important. We make our decisions right uh, in the best interest of our guests right at the moment. So you have Rudy Schreiner right here, who is known as the godfather of the rivers. And Rudy is uh, known for that because of his innovation and his creativity in the way he builds our vessels. So our ships are more shallow at the draw than any other river line. So when the water levels are high, low, or perfect, we always hope for perfect, that doesn't happen always, but when they are um, high or low, we can maneuver the waters much better. As you can imagine, low waters are the most challenging because it can be very uh, interesting how you can float a ship in very little water. Well, we actually have uh, conquered uh, the rivers um, with our low drafts. And what that really means to you is that we operated in 2018 when we had very low waters on the Danube and the Rhine in 11 inches of water. And we are the only river line that had absolutely no cancellations. So we're very proud of that. And, and very uh, it's been very amazing what Rudy brings to the industry overall, but really to the AMA creativity of, of the building of our ships. Christine Karst has a dual degree in tourism from East Berlin and is very engaged with our guests, our uh, shoreside staff, and um, our onboard offerings. And then you have the Murphy family, and they originally owned a very large tour company known as Brinton Worldwide Tours. And they were um, in the midst of packaging all of the programs in Europe. So they came over to AMA after they sold their tour company and gave us their expertise on really the, the, what the people wanted to see once they were there. We have the highest rated ships in Europe. You may have heard of Frommers or Fodors, but Berlitz is one of the only companies that ranks and rates the ships on the rivers. And Berlitz has been in business many, many years, way over 40 years. And over the past four years, we have taken the top 10 positions with Berlitz as to being the best experience on board any river ship on the rivers in Europe. We do hope that you will come join us and allow us to let you experience the beauty of our ships, the luxury of our ships, and the beautiful destinations that we visit. We have award-winning dining. We are only one of two river companies that have been given the, uh, have been inducted into the Le Chain Road de Sur. This is a very, very high-end uh, culinary society out of France, and we were inducted into the society in 12 or 2014. What it really means to you is you're going to experience five-star dining every day at every meal. The other thing that is very wonderful about our dining experience is that your menu changes every single day based on the region that you're traveling, along with your wine selections. Our wines are hand-selected by Rudy and Christine to be serving the finest of wines in the regions. And in addition, 
to that, um, we also offer you a coffee and tea station located in the main lounge area and in our chef's table area, which is a separate dining room that's available to you 24 hours a day. And this is our chef's table. It accommodates anywhere from 24 to 28 people. It is uh, a, a nine course meal prepared by five star chefs and all the plates are prepared all at the moment for our guests. The beautiful part of this experience is there is absolutely no additional cost. So if you're traveling, we can make those reservations on board for you. If you're going with groups, we make those reservations ahead of time for you. But your wines change up here as well. And um, we actually, this is regional foods, just like the main dining room, but it is um, just three different selections at one time. So what you're doing in here is we're ser serving it tapa style, and we're doing three appetizers, a palate cleansing, three entrees, a palate cleansing, and three desserts for our guests. And our exceptional crew, I could speak about our crew for many hours, but we are different on the rivers. And one of the reasons is because we have a cruise manager that travels not just on the river portion of your journey, but they also travel on the land portion of your journey. So let's just say you're going to go to the beautiful Netherlands and Belgium, and you want to extend um, in Amsterdam, then we are going to have our cruise manager. We're going to pick you up at the airport. We're going to take you to your hotel there they are going to assist you and you have their contact information 24 hours a day they make reservations for you they do anything you need them to do they also go with you when you travel on your tours to make sure that uh, everything is seamless and that we again are providing that five-star level of service and we have our wellness host and you know a lot of people today in our living environment consider exercise just a daily part of their routine. Well, when you're on board the ships, we certainly don't want you to give up anything that you have at home because this is going to be your home for the number of days you're traveling with us. And so we have this host that will do five classes per day. They will range from 30 to 45 minutes. They will not conflict with your other tours. We will do everything from core stretching to yoga to Zumba to a cardio to many different things and they make it so much fun. It might be core stretching and chocolate tasting. It might be yoga and champagne tasting. It just depends on what they have planned for the day. But these are all complimentary to you and you do not need to uh, sign up for these. You can just show up for these. One thing very important, especially in our environment today, we know that your vacation is an investment. And you know, after the pandemic this year, I'm sure many, many people, we moved most all of our people to next year and 2022, but many people I'm sure had it in their minds. What if this company isn't in business next year? Well, let me tell you, I want you to rest assured we are in business for many, many more years to come. We pay cash for our ships. We are a debt-free company. As I mentioned, we will be here for many, many more years. And we know how important it is that your vacation investment be there in the long term. So we are taking reservations from 2021, 2022, 2023. We are taking requests. We travel obviously with confidence with this pandemic. This is a very fluid environment right now, so everything is changing. But these are the, the um, policies and procedures we have in place currently. We are the only river line that actually, a uh, domestic line that actually operated during COVID. We started our ship on the 5th of July and we just um, uh, finished our season last week when Germany closed the borders again. So absolutely a beautiful experience. We carried 1,700 German guests during that time, and we had rave, rave reviews about the experience on board. So what we do is our um, crew members obviously wear their face coverings all day, all night, every time that they're out 
away from uh, their staterooms, of course. Our guests wear their face coverings only in the public areas. So when they leave their stateroom, they would wear them to the lounge area, then take them off to the restaurant, then take them off or to go to their tour outdoors and take them off. The tour operator that chartered the ship said he, he went on three of the sailings. He said, I never had my mask on more than 13 minutes in the entire duration of the trip. So it's worked very, very well. We do our temperature checks as the guest leaves the stateroom in the morning uh, and as they return from their excursions. We also have a clean air system on all of these ships, which I think is so important in today's environment. And that is that we have a temperature control system in every single stateroom, the hallways, the restaurants, the lounge areas separate to each other. So what is happening is it's pulling the air from the outside, the fresh air in, it's circulating in your stateroom and it's going right back outside. So you are not breathing air that anybody else per se is breathing. It's the same way in our lounge areas, restaurants, hallways, or any area where we have a crew member or a guest. And so we operate out all those months with absolutely no difficulties and absolutely no virus. Ashore exploring. Um, so our tours have always been smaller than many of the other lines in that we never really went with any more than about 18 to 22 people. Now we're down to about 12 people. So you're even getting that more one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience with the local guides and the, the uh, local people. Social distancing is not a problem. The ships are built uh, with less guests than many of the other lines on the river. So social distancing has not been an issue at all. And then we are sanitizing the luggage twice before it comes to your stateroom. So no worries that there is any problems there moving forward. So we wanna talk about the best of Holland and Belgium. And I have to say right up front, the Netherlands are something to absolutely love. It is, um, it's known for its artistic heritage, for um, its elaborate canals, because what you'll see uh, throughout when I'm showing you and sharing with you all about these cities is that really the Netherlands and Belgium uh, for, for many, in many ways in many of these cities are really built on, on waterways. So um, we actually uh, depart out of Amsterdam and you can see the routes. And I'm gonna talk about all of these little different villages. So here it is, a beautiful picture. And this is actually a picture of Amsterdam. And Amsterdam is, um, you know, the capital of the Netherlands. Sorry, hang on just a minute. I didn't mean to do that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about Amsterdam in just a moment. But you've also got uh, Brussels, Belgium in here. And that's the capital of Belgium. So I wanted to give you one of the insider tips right up front. And that is that they are, uh, the, the uh, Dutch and Belgium waterways are dam controlled because these cities otherwise would absolutely flood all the time or they'd be drought, they would be have drought all the time. So what that means is we never have any issues with water problems, high or low. The same Dutch and Belgium guides often join us in many ports. So these people are all from this region. So you are really getting the real flavor and flair of what the local people do, and they're sharing their local experiences with you. And of course, it's ideal for biking. So here's the beautiful city, a different uh, view of the beautiful city of Amsterdam. And you can see how the houses are built, um, many of them are quite narrow and built straight up. And a lot of this has to do with the tax policies in the country. So you pay for the amount of land on the bottom and you pay uh, by the square footage that way. And then so when if they have the very narrow and they build up, then they don't have the cost of the taxes being so much. But this is the capital of the Netherlands. It's known very much for its artistic heritage, the canal system, as you're seeing right here. This runs all the way through Amsterdam and really all through Holland and some of Belgium. And it's noted, it's, it's really noted, uh, as I mentioned, the narrow houses, um, but really the legacies of the city's 17th century golden age. And you see so much almost of medieval, medieval architecture, as well as, believe it or not, 
kind of a touch of Mediterranean, and um, and then you see some of today's architecture. The museum district um, houses the Van Gogh Museum and, uh, and, and works by Rembrandt and Vermeer, but let me tell you, there's 250 museums in this ma magnificent city. And I'm suggesting that if you decide you would like to go see the Van Gogh Museum, that you have um, you order your tickets before you arrive because they only allow so many people per day and the museum is spectacular the other thing is Anne Frank's house and we go we do go on the canal by Anne Frank's house but if you do want to visit Anne Frank's house let us help you get those tickets early and then, um, of course, cycling. I have to tell you, there are parking lots that are four and five stories high that probably have one million bicycles per level. And I'm not kidding when I say that. The main source of transportation is bicycling. And they use them, believe it or not, like cars and trucks. They stack everything on the back of them, in the front of them, and that's how they get around. This is one of the healthiest um, actual countries in the world. And I think it's simply because they do a lot of exercising uh, rather than driving cars. The roads are very, very narrow. And so um, bicycles are the best way to get around. Oh, excuse me, I wanna go back one. Oops, sorry. And I wanna show you the tulips. So as you're seeing here, the tulips, you always see beautiful flowers in Holland. Uh, this picture right here was taken during tulip time. And tulip time is the third week of March through the first week of May. And then this is the beautiful canal, as you can see how it's quite wide and it, it goes all the way through the city. And we take you on a ride on one of these small boats all the way through all of the canals. So you can see the entire city and then you have free time to be able to go back and visit some of the things you would like to spend time at. The gastronomy in this area is amazing. So what you're looking at is these are stroopwafels and they are literally um, like a little tiny thin waffle with uh, a little bit of chocolate in the center and they are putting syrup over the top and they are absolutely amazing. Many times um, I you stop and eat one of these uh, without the syrup, of course, because it's got wonderful flavor. It's almost like a sugar cone flavor. Uh, and then you've got the bitter ball, and then you also have the brown cafes. So you've got all kinds of beautiful cafes throughout this city that are serving beautiful regional uh, delights like this. And then you have the Grand Palace in Brussels. This is the capital city of Belgium. It's really known for its Art Deco architecture and its Gothic cathedrals. And of course, it's you know small, quaint, gilded homes. But the central square is where the Grand Palace is located. And the Grand Palace is one of the best shopping arcades in Europe. Throughout Europe, this is known as the shopping arcade that everybody visits at some point. So as beautiful as the architecture is, if you can imagine, you can shop all up and down this street or the grand place, if you will, and absolutely delightful. Every kind of shopping you can imagine from local wares to uh, Delft, which comes from another part of Holland, um, to the wooden shoes, to all kinds of wonderful things. As well, you can also find all of the flower bulbs in this area, as well as the waterways. And then you have Bruges. And Bruges is known, um, for many years, was known for the wool industry. It was originally established to create the first European industrialized zone. As you can see, of course, again, the houses are built right on the water's edge and really uh, many of them stilted. Um, but the church, I wanna show you this, the Church of Our Lady is uh, in Bruges, um, dates mainly from the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries. So you can imagine the history in this city as well. The church is very essential. It's a, a monument of wealth, sophistication, taste, devotion to uh, this beautiful Catholic city. Uh, the history and faith stand today celebrated in this wonderful building. So this is still a functional cathedral. And then you have the beautiful 
Belgium chocolates. And it was so interesting because um, I don't know if you know this, but some of the finest cocoa is uh, produced in South Africa. So that is where some of the cocoa, much of the cocoa is, is bought for the Belgium chocolate shops. And I will tell you, you will find Belgium chocolate all along your journey. You can go, they have beautiful chocolate shops and little cafes, and you can go in and buy one piece or you can buy it by the pound. But it is a wonderful way to experience all the different flavors that they have in their chocolate. The chocolate has been produced since about the 19th century. And today it is still a huge part of their economy. Because as you know and can imagine, of course, they ship all over the world. This is a, a interesting little city, Dortrecht, and this is the fifth largest city in Holland. But the really neat part about it, I love this picture because it shows you the waterways all through the city. And um, it is, uh, they have six museums, but this is the oldest city. So you can uh, kind of see how these little narrow roads connect all of these different neighborhoods. The medieval city center is, believe it or not, uh, the home to 950 different monuments that represent the history of the city. It has a lot, a lot of rich history and Dutch culture. And this day when you're in uh, Dontrecht, you will have the option also to go to Rotterdam and to visit the Delft factory. Well, if you're not familiar with Delft, Delft is a, um, a Holland or Netherland type art, and it is porcelain. It is hand-painted porcelain. I'm sure you've seen it. It's a blue and white porcelain. So you have the opportunity to go to the Delft factory. And I have to tell you, it is absolutely amazing. So you will have time to walk around this city but if I were you, I might really consider that Delft factory when you're visiting this city. And you can make those decisions when you're on board. You do not have to do that ahead of time. What we're going to do is you're going to be able to see, and this is on all of our rivers, you can see all of the tours ahead of time and you can go ahead and sign up if you choose, but you do not have to. You can wait and sign up when you get to the ship. Or maybe you sign up ahead of time and you get to the ship and you want to change your mind. Never a problem. Remember, all of these excursions are all included in your packaging. So you have the opportunity to change your mind at any given point. Kinderdijk. How beautiful Kinderdijk is. It's a, a village in the South Holland province of the Netherlands. It's really known for its iconic 18th century windmills, as you're looking right here. These, uh, amazingly so, have actually been turned into museums, some of them, and some of them are still working windmills. So the Dutch culture is fascinating. Um, one thing also that you get in, in this, like this district, but also throughout Amsterdam and, and throughout Belgium is their ability to make cheeses. Their cheese is absolutely, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it to give you an idea. There is a company that I shop at when I go over to the Netherlands and into Belgium, and I order from them all the time throughout the year. Their cheese is so fresh. They have goat, they have sheep, and they have, believe it or not, beef cheese. Um, but that's what you see when you're out here amongst these windmills. The reason I bring that up is because as you're traveling amongst these windfield, windmills, many times on the other sides of the, of the waterways, you'll be seeing the cheese shops and the cheese stores and the farms where they are producing the milk for these beautiful, beautiful cheeses they have throughout these two countries. Um, this particular area, it's a management network, features 19 mills and three pumping stations, plus all kinds of dikes and reservoirs that control the flooding of the cities so that they don't have flooding of these windmills and they don't have flooding of their cities. Uh, there's bike trails that crisscross the area, um, leading to many, many of the museums and the main visitor centers. This is a beautiful, beautiful area to see. And then we have Yortrecht, 
in the Netherlands, which again is another city, as all of them are, on a waterway. And you can see the little walkway over here on the left-hand side of the little markets and cafes along the walkway. But what this area is really known for is going to be this magnificent Castle de Haar in the, in the Netherlands, as I mentioned. Look at this beautiful place. It's the largest castle in Holland and is located right outside this little city. And it's only about a half hour from Amsterdam. It, would, it has every single thing you would expect to see in any kind of a castle, whether you read about castles or you see castles in Germany or, or castles are your, um, your passion. But it has everything, towers, turrets, moats, gates, suspension, bridges. The castle is also a museum to many, many art objects, as you can imagine. Next to the castle, you find a beautiful chapel that uh, along with parks and gardens and without a doubt, this is one of the most luxurious castles and areas all throughout Europe. And I find it incredible that it is basically still operational as you're seeing, but with the beautiful moat and the beautiful gardens that you're seeing the gardens right here, right in front of it. So this area of the world has so very much to offer. I'm very excited because normally up to this year, you could only really see the Netherlands and Belgium during tulip time, which as I mentioned was the third week of March through the first week of May. I'm very excited because next year we have added uh, six additional sailings throughout the year. So you can actually visit this area all different months next year, which is really exciting. But really one of the most important things as well is that we in the year 2022 are going to have Floriade. And Floriade is going to be, it is the largest horticultural expo in the world. It only comes every 10 years. And so it really gives you an opportunity to see this area and really have um, a full understanding because on every one of our sailings in, that are on the Rhine River or the Netherlands during that time, we will be including tickets to this beautiful horticultural uh, expo. And there's only certain amount of tickets that are issued every day. So we have it all handled for you. But look at this sunset. Isn't this breathtaking? And of course they have their windmills just like we have ours, right? Kind of uh, on the landscape, if you will. The gastronomy of this area is fabulous. It's mussels, beer, beef stew with fries, which is very common. And of course, lots of waffles and you see the cheeses up here, as I have mentioned. But the gastronomy of this area is, is one of the finest in the world as well. And there you go is Floriad. So um, as I mentioned, um, you know, we will be including all of your tickets for Floriad and um, be giving you plenty of time to be able to visit the expo so you can see this magnificent horticultural display. And there we are. Thank you so much for arranging everything for us, but very important that you have the contact information. So I'll leave this up here for a moment and maybe you want to um, say a couple of words. Hailey? No? Did you get yourself off mute? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was hitting the wrong thing. But yeah, thanks everyone for uh, coming. I really appreciate it. Um, we hopefully will connect. And if you have any questions about these different rivers, I'm happy to go over them. We'll have another one. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, focus on Portugal and Spain in January. So be on the lookout for that. I have them on my Facebook events page. Um, if you have any questions, here's my contact information and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time. Um, if we can help with anything, please let us know. Please wear your mask so that we can open up the world and so that we can host you and visit all of these beautiful countries. Happy holidays to you and your families.